Good morning, everyone. Today we're looking at the fuel temperature sensor. Now that's built into the fuel pump assembly, which is located right here on the vehicle. Now on most vehicles, it's located under the rear cushion, the rear seat cushion. And very often you just have a few clips. You just undo the clips or push the clips toward or pull the clips toward the front of the vehicle and the rear seat just unhinges and you can remove it from the vehicle. Another quick note, if you do have a late model vehicle, is very often you may have a satellite sensor in this vicinity and if so you want to disconnect the negative terminal to the battery and wait at least a minute or so because you don't want any faults in the airbag system but that being said right here is the plate that we need to remove you often see these type of plates with 10 millimeter screws so we'll remove the screws get access to the fuel pump assembly I'll show you on how you can quickly test the sensor without removing the fuel pump and then if the fuel uh, temperature sensor does need replacement, we do have a separate video on how to do that. So I'll splice everything together just so it's, it's simplistic and it's fluid in a sense. So let's start by removing this top plate. Then you have a grommet right here. which is always a good idea to remove if you can. There you go. Okay, we'll get the plate out of the way. And that's it. Let me come in for a close-up so you can see exactly what we have here. So as you can see, we have two fuel lines as well as two harness connectors. Every vehicle is a little bit different. You may just have one harness connector and that sort of thing. But in this case, we need to remove this sucker. Now, how do I know that? Just do a little bit of research, and one thing I always recommend is check Google Images. So for example, this has, happens to be a 97 Maxima. So if I type in, in Google Images, 1997 Nissan Maxima P0180, very quickly I can see which harness I need to be dealing with. So it happens to be this guy right here. So just by doing a little bit of research, you can often dig up this information. If you are having some trouble, feel free to send me a message. If I have the information, I will help you. So right here, you just push in the tab and remove the harness connector. Don't pull from the wiring. Pull from the body of the connector. Okay. And right from here, we can test the temperature sensor. Now to do that, let me just zoom out here. To, to, to do that, you need a multimeter. Now this is what they look like. They often run maybe $15 or $20. You can get a pretty good one. The test that we need to do, or the setting, is an ohms reading, which is a resistance reading. So let me just hit that, and it's this guy right here. I'll come in for a different shot so you can see exactly what it looks like. And on many, many vehicles, if the temperature is roughly 70 degrees, you want to see anywhere between 2 to 3 kilo ohms. The warmer the temperature, the lower the resistance will be and vice versa. If you're doing this in the winter time, you're, you will see a higher resistance reading. So if I'm confusing you, let me just show you exactly what we need to do here. Now with the meter, we have two leads, a red and a black. So I will place one lead on the bottom right and the other lead on the bottom left. It doesn't matter which color touches which prong, does not make a difference. So here we go. We should see something between two to three kilo ohms. Let me get a little comfortable here. All right. Which we do. We have 2.2 kilo ohms. This sensor is working perfectly well. Now, for example, if you were doing this in the wintertime, you would see a higher number here, a higher resistance. If you were doing this, uh, let's say, in 100 degree weather, you would see a lower number. But this is pretty average on many vehicles. If it's roughly 70 degrees out, which it is right now Fahrenheit, you would see something between two to three kilo ohms. So this gives you a very good idea on how quickly you can test one of these sensors. Now let's say you test a sensor and you still have a problem. In other words, you have a trouble code. Then you can test the wiring. In other words, to make sure that, that there are no breaks in the wiring. And to do that, again, you do need the multimeter. And in this case, we need to do a, let me just get this in view here, we need to do a continuity. Now continuity, it lo the symbol looks like a wireless hotspot. So for example, right here, this symbol, this is what you want to see. Now continuity simply means two points make a connection. So you hear an audible alert like this, okay? Now let me just move the camera 
show you how, you how you can do a continuity reading and then lastly I will show on how you can remove the fuel pump and how to replace a temperature sensor. Now for this next test we're dealing with the harness connector. And as you can see you have four prongs and the question is which prong am I dealing with here? In this case it's the upper right hand prong which is number two. Now how do I know that? I just did a little bit of research to dig up the information. Again if you have any trouble just send me a message. If I have the information I will help you. With that being said with the multimeter the red lead will go to number two here. I'll place that down hold it down. Not very hard. I don't want to deform the prong in any way. And then your black is your ground and we should hear an audible sound. Now one thing to note you make sure you get a good ground. For example right here I have a metal bolt that's sort of rusty. If I touch this I don't hear anything. Nothing. But right back here I have a bolt holding down the seat belt which is a good grounding point. And there you go. So make sure you touch a good ground because if you do this test and you don't hear anything, it could just be you don't have a good ground. But this has a good ground, so we're in good shape. Now if you don't hear an audible alert here, that means you have a breakage somewhere in the wiring. Could be back here in the rear of the harness, could be somewhere near the computer, but you got to trace it. I mean, that's the short answer. Chances are if you're getting this trouble code, it has to do with the sensor itself. Now we do have another video that removed the fuel pump and I show on how to remove the temperature sensor. So I'm going to splice that in right now. Uh, and before we do that, I just want to say thank you for watching. Hopefully this helps you out. And let's just get right over to that other video. Now the first step is we need to release the fuel pressure in the system. To do that, you have a cover here. This is the main fuse box. And you have a bunch of different fuses. And it tells you various things. But what we're interested in here is the fuel pump. It happens to be a 15 amp fuse is a little holder place it around the fuse and there you go so now we'll crank the car it'll probably start and then it'll die off crank it a few more times and that will release all of the fuel pressure in the system and here's just a close-up showing where that fuse is located right here okay here we go Then crank it just for a few more seconds. To disconnect the fuel pump power adapter here, the harness. There we go. There's a tab right here. Just press it down with your thumb and pull up. So what I've done is just remove this backing, the foam backing, just so we have a better view. Also cleaned up the top of the fuel pump assembly before we pull this out. But very quickly, right here you have two fuel lines. To remove these, you need a special tool. I'll include the part number in the description box below. It's around $20, this tool. Uh, maybe if you have a buddy, maybe he has one lying around by chance. But uh, So we'll place the tool around the fuel line. It's a little funky to deal with. Okay. And now we're going to press in there we go okay so I just placed that fuel tube let me grab some paper towels what I've done off camera is I grabbed an extra 5 16 of an inch fuel hose placed it over the end coming this nipple coming out of the fuel pump and I have a bolt on the opposite end this stops the fuel flow because the fuel just keeps on leaking out it doesn't want to stop then you have the quick connector right here. What I've done is I've, if once this points down, the fuel just, again, just wants to come out. So I have it bungee cord so it's facing an upward projection. So we'll do this other connector, and then we have eight bolts, and then we'll pull the fuel pump right from the vehicle. Just have some paper towels ready to pick up this fuel, because it will come out, unfortunately. Grab an extra fuel line, like so. Okay, got to put this in there. Not sure if it really helps, but this fuel just, it just leaks out from everywhere, unfortunately. Okay, I'm going to place a piece of tape over this, and then we'll start by removing these bolts. Now we're going to remove the eight bolts holding the pump to the vehicle, and we'll place it on the bench. 
and replace the fuel filter. And this is an 8 millimeter, by the way, or 5 sixteenths of an inch. Top cover to the side here. It is a little tricky to get this out. Can be a little patient, but here we go. All right. So now we have the fuel pump assembly on the bench. First step is we need to disconnect both connectors. There's a little tab right here. You just press it in, pull it down from the body. You have another one right here. You press it in and pull it down from the body. If you need a little help, what I used is a flat, very small flathead screwdriver. And for the blue wire, it was a little difficult to remove. Let me put it back in here. So what I did is I just pressed on the inside and pressed down. And there you go. Now also on the bottom of this assembly, you have the fuel temperature sensor, which is right here. So we also need to remove that as well. So we're just going to remove this like so. And then right here is the fuel level sensor. So this keeps track of how much fuel is in the fuel tank. So this would be full and this would be empty. So to remove it, there's a little claw right here where my index finger is. You just press it in and then push up the entire, oh, the entire part here. So press it in, push up, and there you go. And then we're just going to remove this and place it to the side. Okay, so we'll place this to the side. Reinstall the temperature sensor on the bottom, and then you have the fuel level sensor that just clips on the bottom. Okay, go ahead and reinstall this guy. This goes, let's see, this way. So I'm just going to clean up these wires just a little bit more off camera. I just want them to line up evenly. And then uh, this will be ready to reinstall in the fuel tank. Before we reinstall the fuel pump assembly, take note that there is a gasket. It's a good idea to replace this gasket as well. We have the new Subaru part right here. Also take note of the indentations. You have one, two, a third one right down here. So just match it when you install the new gasket onto the material. So that way you need to install the upper plate, and the upper plate coincides with those three tabs on the gasket. Now when you're ready to tighten down these bolts, you'll do so in a crisscross pattern. Also note that they're not very tight, around three to four foot-pounds, so don't over tighten them.
Okay, so now we'll go ahead and reconnect the battery, reinstall the fuse for the fuel pump, crank it up, and we'll be in good shape. So moment of truth. Let's make sure our fuel level works, which it does. Okay, here goes nothing. That's it, we're in good shape.